we're going to be looking at the new appliance provisioning capabilities we've added in the release to aid our customers. These provisioning and new reconfiguration capabilities will aid customers with the automation and fleet management of their Blue Cat appliances to deliver improved operational efficiency and rapid service delivery. Secondly, it increases the resiliency of the critical infrastructure by allowing for improved centralised management of the entire appliance fleet. Now, not only by the address manager, but with the new APIs too. The feature we've introduced allows our customers to utilise the exact same APIs, tools and service descriptors, whether the Blue Cat appliances are deployed on-premises, virtually or in the cloud. We can fully automate the appliance provisioning and reconfiguration of service in a consistent manner wherever they are deployed. So let's now take a look at the architecture we've added in Integrity 9.3 to support our new provisioning functionality. The first critical part of the solution is the new common description of an appliance's service configuration. This JSON schema supports the setting of many common services such as SNMP and NTP on our appliances, but it also supports new functionality like gateway as a service, service point on BDDS and DNS activity functions recently added in Integrity 9.3. As we add new capabilities to our solution on the roadmap, We'll continue to ensure these capabilities are covered in this same JSON schema in the later releases, allowing for provisioning automation and reconfiguration of services on the fly. For details on the schema itself and the options available, see the Configure Service Services section in the Integrity 9.3 Address Manager API guide. The next important part of the architecture supporting our provisioning mechanism is Cloud Init. Integrity 9.3 greatly enhances our capabilities by allowing us to pass our new JSON service descriptor to find far more settings than ever before. The final part of the architecture are a series of new API calls which allow for the reconfiguration of services on individual or many appliances in the customer's appliance fleet at once. The first REST API we've added is the GET Server Services call. This API allows customers to get the currently deployed service descriptor from an existing appliance under BAM control. This API is called against individual appliances using the object ID. It will return the current JSON service descriptor from the appliance. Two subsequent APIs support the reconfiguration of service on appliances. The first of these being a REST POST call called Configure Server Services. This API call is used to send a new JSON service descriptor for the target appliances and it will return a job token as a response. The final call we've added is a REST GET call, GET Server Services Configuration Status. This API is passed the job token from the Configure Server Services API and it provides feedback of the reconfiguration task. It returns status JSON which details the reconfiguration task in great granular detail whether changes succeeded or failed or are still being carried out, they are detailed in the response from this call. So let's now take a look at our new provisioning functionality in action. In the demo lab, we have a BAM 7000 running Integrity 9.3 and BDDS 2550 and 75 appliances imaged with Integrity 9.3.2. In demo one, we're going to be looking at provisioning a new bare metal BDDS 25 appliance fresh out of the box. So in step one, we have our predefined JSON service descriptor. In step two, we're going to be creating a cloud init ISO file. So we'll be encapsulating the service descriptor in user data and adding some basic metadata. And then finally, we'll be creating the ISO file for this BDDS appliance using a Linux command gen ISO image. In step three, we'll attach this cloud init ISO file to the BDDS 25 appliances iDRAC virtual media and rebooting the appliance to provision this appliance uh, to its desired service configuration. Um, the last stage we'll go through is after this reboot, we'll take this BDDS25 under BAM control to check its service configuration has been correctly applied. So in this first highlighted section of the required user data, we can see the older Integrity 8.3 YAML cloud init stanza. And below this is the new JSON service descriptor. This next highlighted section of JSON, we're actually setting the DNS resolvers to 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4. Next, we're setting the default route for this appliance to 172.17.44.1. And we're also configuring ETH0 to use the address 172.17.44.96 with a 24 mask. And we'll also set the service descriptors on these interfaces to show they were configured via cloud init. 
We're also going to do something new here in that we're going to make this appliance pingable, something that hasn't been supported before. So we're setting pingable to true in the firewall section here. Finally, in our service descriptor, we're going to set our SNMP parameters for this appliance. Uh, we'll set the basic contact details, the SNMP name, set the V1 community, and also let's add a track resolver to make things clear. These settings could normally only be set via the GUI once the appliance was under band control. The metadata file for our cloud in ISO will just need one single command set, DS mode equals local. Now we're going to be using the gen ISO image Linux command to generate our ISO file. We're going to call our ISO file bdds25ci.iso. We need to set the volume ID to CI data for cloud in it, and the type to Joliet passing the user data and metadata. So now we have our small cloud in an ISO file and we're ready to attach this to the iDRAC on our BDDS25 and move on. Our BDDS25 appliance is currently powered down with no configuration, so we're going to select the virtual media option and attach the BDDS25 ISO we created and map this to the virtual CD-ROM. So now we just need to reboot the appliance and during boot up the cloud init mechanism will detect the CD-ROM and seeing this CI data volume type try and pass the configuration we've passed in the JSON service descriptor. We're calling up a shell from a local machine um, pinging the address 172.17.44.96 so if our appliance is configured using the service descriptor we should pretty quickly see this appliance become pingable. And here we can see now we've reached the appliance console with a familiar cat's head. We can see the appliance is using our .96 addresses, the ping window is showing, and also we can see that the host name has been set to BDDS25. The appliance has been configured. So if we now log into the appliance console, we'll run a few commands to check some of the other configuration we applied has taken effect. So let's check the DNS resolver first of all. We should see that this is set to 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 and 8.8.4.4. .8 .4. And let's check the primary IP addresses dot ninety six with our twenty four mask. We'll next take the appliance under band control and confirm our more advanced settings around SNMP have also been applied. So on our BAM seven thousand running Integrity nine point three, we're now going to take this newly provisioned BDDS twenty five uh, running on one seven two seventeen forty four dot ninety six under band control. We're going to do this to check the service configuration in the graphical user interface. So first let's just take the appliance under Proteus control. On the details tab of the appliance we can already see the correct primary IP address has been assigned. Um, so we're now going to take a look at the services tab of this appliance. Uh, and we're going to go into the interfaces section first of all. Uh, we're going to check the descriptions that we applied in our service configuration are uh, very clearly shown. We should see uh, cloud in it on each of the interfaces, and uh, we do correctly see this on E0, 3 to 4, and also the loopback address, just confirming with our JSON service descriptor on the right hand side of the screen. Something new in the 9.3 GUI is the service pane for the DNS resolver. Again, we can confirm that the correct setting of 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 and 8.8.4.4 .4 has been applied. So let's now take a look at the SNMP settings and confirm those have also been applied correctly. And as expected, the SNMP settings we provided in CloudInit2 have also been assigned. We can compare the SNMP contact details and the track destination we provided in our JSON service descriptor match what's being shown in the graphical user interface in BAM. So let's recap what we've seen in demo one. We've provisioned a new BDDS hardware appliance. We've seen how the new JSON service descriptor for our BDDS25 appliance can be applied to provision a new blank appliance from scratch. We've created a cloud init ISO file using the gen ISO image command and attached this to the virtual media of the iDRAC card. Upon reboot, we've checked in the console and the BAM GUI that it's been correctly provisioned. Again, please take note that the same mechanism can be used with physical, virtual or cloud appliances going forwards. So in demo 2, we're going to look at getting the existing JSON service script uh, from an existing appliance. The appliance itself must already be under BAM control, and we're going to use our BDDS50 appliance in the lab for this. We're going to be making GET calls in Postman to the GET Server Services API using the object ID for our existing appliance. And we'll take a look at the JSON service descriptor that's returned. 
So within the 9.3 address manager, first we need to get the object ID for our BDDS50 appliance, and we can get this easily off the details pane. We can see the object ID highlighted here. The BDDS50 appliance was configured using the same process we used in demo 1, so we've used Cloudera to provision this appliance already. So we should have the same settings, and if we check the service configuration, we can see our DNS resolvers are set to 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4, and also the SNMP details for this appliance has already been provisioned. Only the SNMP hostname, of course, differs from demo 1, as this is a different appliance. Within Postman, of course, we first need to get the BAN token using the login call. My Postman is configured to set the token as a variable for use in any subsequent calls we're making. So now I've got my BAM token, I can now make uh, the next call, which is the Get Server Services API. In this API, we're going to pass the object ID we captured from the details pane for our BDDS50 appliance. That's the target for this call. So let's now make this call. And pretty soon we should see the JSON service descriptor here returned from the appliance. The service descriptor will have a lot of settings we didn't see during demo 1, as there are some defaults being applied because it's under BAM control already. We can see some of the additional standards here, things like the default route, the interfaces we saw already in demo 1. As it's under BAM control, the NTP settings, for example, are set to the IP address of the address manager at default. But we can also see some defaults in the service descriptor for newer services, such as DNS activity and also gateway as a service. We can see here at the top of the JSON service descriptor, for example, that the DNS activity function is currently disabled on this appliance. Its enabled state is set to false. So a quick recap of what we've seen in demo 2. We've shown how once under BAM control, we could use the get server services API call by passing the object ID um, to get the currently applied JSON service descriptor for our appliance. This call can only be used against a single appliance at a time, not multiple appliances. On to demo 3 in the lab, and in this scenario we're going to be looking at reconfiguring an existing appliance using a new JSON service descriptor. We're going to be making a configure server services post call to our BDDS75 appliance and passing it the object ID as a target and the service descriptor in the body as JSON. The call will return a token for the task, which we'll then use with the get server services configuration status call to monitor. We'll then validate that the changes we wanted have taken place. So the first action in this demo will be to get the object ID for our BDDS75 appliance from the address manager details pane. We'll also start by taking a look at some of the existing service configuration applied to this appliance in the GUI. In this case, we'll take a look at the firewall settings. We want to see what's set for the ping, and we can see here at the moment that the ping is allowed on this appliance. We'll also take a look at the NTP settings. Um, here we can actually see that currently it's set to the IP address of the BAM as its current NTP source. So we're now going to swap over to using Postman for the next section of the demo, and the first action again is going to be to log in. We're now going to be making a post call to the Configure Server Services API, passing in the object ID of our BDDS75 appliance. And in the JSON body here, we can see an existing descriptor. So we're going to modify the descriptor, and we're actually going to disable the ping this time. And we're also going to come in here to the address of the NTP server, and we're actually going to change it to a public IP address. Upon issue, we're going to get a job task ID back, and we're going to take this token, and we're now going to use it with the get server services status API call. By calling the get server services configuration status with the token, we can see the status of the reconfiguration request for this object ID, and we can see here it's succeeding successfully. Returning to our address manager, we now again can look at the service configuration for this appliance, and first we'll check the firewall um, to see if the ping has now correctly been disabled on this BDDS75, and it has. Also, we should quickly check the NTP service configuration confirms too that the IP address has been updated from the BAM IP we had previously to the new public IP address we issued in our service configuration JSON. So to recap demo 3, we've seen how a call to the Configure Server Services API with a single object ID and JSON service descriptor can be used to reconfigure an existing appliance. The Configure API call will return a token which can be passed to the Get Server Services Configuration Status API which monitors whether the change was correctly applied. Again, for this demo, the appliance must already be under BAM control and it's very important to note the detailed response given by the status call will be extremely useful in troubleshooting any change problems. 
Our final demo for will be covering changes to multiple appliances services in a single API call. So this could be useful for fleet management going forwards. We'll be modifying a JSON service descriptor on the fly in the demo, making a single configure server services call, but this time we'll enter the object IDs of our 25, 50 and 75 appliance. We'll also be using the get server services configuration status call to monitor the changes over all of these appliances. We of course will also confirm that the changes we've made have been correctly applied to our appliances. So all three of our BDDS appliances are currently under band control already. And if we look at the service configuration currently applied to one of the appliances, we can see the following is set. First of all, that the ping is set to disabled. Secondly, we can see that the NTP server is currently configured to the IP address of the address manager. And finally, we'll also check the DNS resolver and we can see that it's set to 8.8.8 .8 and 8.8.4.4. We'll now swap over to Postman again to make our API calls. And as before, the first action we need to carry out is a login call to get the token from the van. We're going to make the same configure server services call as in demo 3, but this time we're going to provide the object IDs of all three appliances to the call. Moving over to the JSON body, we're going to modify the service descriptor, so we're going to change the resolvers first of all to 1.1.1.1 and 2.2.2.2. Secondly, we'll change the firewalls to allow the PIN. And finally, we'll come into the NTP settings and we're going to set it to the FQDN of a public NTP service. Almost immediately upon sending the API call, we can see in the blue window that ping has now been enabled on at least one of the appliances. Checking the status of the configuration change using the token is already showing that the appliances have had their configuration change actioned. The status call is showing upon firewall, NTP and resolver changes, each appliance successfully applied the change. If we now revert to the address manager and look at the service configuration, we can immediately confirm that the DNS resolvers we set were correctly updated to the 1.1.1 address and 2.2.2 address. We can also confirm in the firewall that the PIN has now been enabled too. And finally, we can see that the FQDN of the NTP server has been correctly applied. To recap demo 4, we've shown how modification of the JSON service descriptor can allow for an update to multiple appliances in parallel using the Configure Server Services API, but by passing it multiple object IDs. The Get Server Service Configuration status returns detailed status for changes over many appliances in parallel with great granular detail too.